Welcome, Seth. Welcome, all of you, to this session on Voices of Faith, the Spirit of Sufi Poetry. Um, I'm Mohini, and I'll be moderating the session today. I'm really delighted to be in conversation with Dr. Saif Mahmood, um, who, as you all might know, is a Delhi-based author, commentator, translator, and rights activist. Um, an advocate of the Supreme Court of India, he's a leading name in the Urdu world and globally known for his passionate recitations of Urdu poets, which hopefully we'll get to hear some of today. Um, Dr. Mahmood's book, uh, Beloved Delhi, A Mughal City and Her Greatest Poets, which I have here, um, is a much-loved novel um, that presents the literary arc of the Indian capital through the lens of Urdu poets of Mughal India. Um, he's also the founder of the South Asian Alliance for Literature, Art and Culture and is currently a fellow at the Bonavero Institute um, of Human Rights at the University of Oxford, uh, where he's researching dissent in Mughal courts. Um, there are so many things that we can talk to you about today, but we'll stick to the topic of Sufi poetry. Um, the last time we were in conversation, it was during the pandemic, mm -hmm. talking about Urdu poetry and translation. So I'm really interested to now hear your thoughts on Sufi poetry. And, you know, it's, it's really just a pleasure to be here on stage with you. We also got to spend some time in Oxford while you're here. So, yeah, it's just a real privilege to be here with you. Um, so we'll now begin the conversation. And just to sort of contextualize Sufi poetry for our audiences, maybe you could start by talking about when Sufi poetry sort of began, um, what are its, you know, most sort of recognizable key features, and what is it that makes Sufi poetry so timeless and so sort of universal? Thank you, Mohini, and thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm very glad that you Googled me. Thank you. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and uh, this is actually an Oxford session because both of us are in Oxford, and the gentleman yeah, who was hosting, Vinayak, <laughs> is also in Oxford, and I can it's see some true. other faces from the university. So thank you all very much. But, uh, and thank you for that question. I think that takes us straight to the core that uh, needs to be addressed today, the what is Sufism, the lost, I would say, the lost voice of, of Sufism. Uh, but and what is the Sufi mind, Sufi tradition? I mean, it has been reduced to Bollywood songs and bars, you know, Khwaja mere Khwaja, dil mein samaja. Surely that is not Sufism. Uh, or, uh, you know, a, a bigoted politician going to a dargah. That is also surely not Sufism. The, I think the best way to give you a glimpse into the Sufi mind is perhaps for me to read or recite some, some poetry which I think is Sufi poetry and uh, is usually not considered Sufi. Let me just, just start with, with Iqbal. And Iqbal in one of his Persian you know, dialogues with, with God uh, says, uh, let me just read this for you actually in Persian. I, I'm, my Persian is terrible, so please excuse my Persian accent. This jahan, so this is God. Both God and, and, and humans have been given six lines each. But it is the human, uh, you know, which tellingly has the, the last word. Jaharaz yak abu gil afridam tu ira no tatar o zanga afridi. Manaz khak polad nab afridam tu shamshir o tiro tafang afridi. Tabar afridi nihale chamanra. Says, I created, God is saying to man, I created this world from, the, from one water and, and earth. And you created Iran and Tataria and Nubia. I forged from dust iron's pristine ore. And you fashioned the sword, arrow, and the gun. To fell the garden tree, you made the axe. You fashioned the cage to imprison the singing bird. And man replies, to Shab Afridi. Charag Afridam. Sakal Afridi, Ayag Afridam. Bayabano Kosaro Rag Afridi. Hayabano Gulzaro Bag Afridam. Mananam Keas Sangaina Sazam. Mananam Keas Zahar Noshina Sazam. You created night. He's telling God, You created night. I, the lamp. You created clay. And I, the cup. You created deserts and mountain peaks and valleys, and I turned them into flower beds and parks and orchards. It is I who grind a mirror out of stone and brew elixir from the poison that you created. <laughs> so the Sufi mind is really a curious, extraordinary mind which is curious to explore. Uh, it's, it has a spiritual you know, uh, magnetism about it. It has an inward journey, and it is understanding 
logic, it is understanding science, it is the creation of art, of, of music, of poetry under the overarching umbrella of spirituality. Mm. Ja, let me just read one more share by, by Iqbal to, to make my point and how he elevates the stature of, of humans and brings it in competition with, with God, with Allah. Man is saying to Allah, Tune ye kya ghazab kiya, mujko bhi fash kar diya. Tune ye kya ghazab kiya, mujko bhi fash kar diya, mein hi to ek raas tha, sina ek aayanath mein. What on earth did you do? You revealed even me. I was the only secret in the chest of, of, of this universe. So look at the stature that man is brought to. And, and then, uh, uh, there is uh, another share by, uh, by Majroo. Ki, this is the other side of Sufism. Ki, uh, mujh se kaha, you know, there is a, obviously a common belief in uh, all monotheistic religions that Archangel Gabriel, the job that he has in his, as an angel is to bring divine revelation to prophets. He brought divine revelation to one of prophets from Abraham to, to Muhammad. Jibreel, mujh se kaha, Jibreel e junoone, ye bhi wahi e ilahi hai. مجھ سے کہا جبریل جنون نے یہ بھی وہی ہے الہی ہے مذہب تیرا مذہب دل ہے باقی سب گمراہی ہے I'll translate it for those who don't understand Urdu Gabriel of madness said to me even this is divine revelation what? مذہب تیرا مذہب دل ہے باقی سب گمراہی ہے the true faith, the real faith is only the religion of the heart the faith of the heart everything else is just going astray so this is the other side, the other side of, of, of Sufism. And but I, I must also to answer your question end with saying that and a lot of people actually shy away from saying this now uh, after Rumi has become an American model um, <laughs> that you know Sufi poetry is actually best understood as a dissident uh, uh, movement. That's true. There is this, uh, uh, it was suppressed by mainstream religion, it challenged mainstream religion in, in many ways. And there's this perception of, of the creator and the createe as uh, a lover and, and beloved. Mm. All this is there, but, but it must also be remembered the Sufi poetry is ostensibly and deeply an Islamic discourse. Yeah. And uh, albeit it's an individualistic Islamic discourse, it's founded in sometimes even in romanticism mm. and complete submission. Like Vedam Varsi ka share hai ki میری عرض تمنا بھی عجب عرض تمنا ہے میری عرض تمنا بھی عجب عرض تمنا ہے کہ تجھ سے مانگتا ہوں اور تجھ ہی کو مانگتا ہوں میں look at my desire this strange desire that I have that I ask you and only of you تو یہ میرے خیال سے اس کا جواب آپ کو مل گیا ہوگا تھوڑا تھوڑا but I want to now you know now that we are talking about this distinction between the love for God and love for humans there are these two concepts right in Sufi poetry of ishq haqiqi which is the love for God and ishq majazi which is the love for humans so what is this distinction in Sufi poetry how does it sort of play out in the tradition yeah I think this distinction is was and I mean never existed traditionally it was created later by academics like yourself who like making distinctions and you know like these neat neat divisions in literature and art. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, when I was researching this book, I went to Professor Shamim Hanafi, who was one of the greatest critics and writers alive then. And I asked him this question, because in the context of Khwaja Mir Dard, who's one of the poets who's uh, showcased in my book, uh, uh, I asked him if he was a, a poet of Ishq Majazi or Ishq Haqiqi. Mm. And he said to me, Saif Sahib, mere nazdeek is tarah ka distinction jo hai nihayati himakat ki baat hai. It's foolish to make such distinctions. Agar, he said, if, you know, you read the couplet for, it, for what it means to you. And you could interpret it the way you like. Forget commentaries, forget even what I have to say, he said. Forget even what I have to say about this couplet and, and see it the way you like to see it. I remember what Ashok Vajpayee had once said, you know, about, about poetry. He said, Kavita ka jo sach hai, wo sirf aadha sach hota hai, wo pura tab hota hai, jab usme kuch sach aap apna bhi milale. So that's what Shamir Hanfi sahab also told me. But having said that, there is, you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, verses in Urdu, poetry, that can be uh, 
I mean, they, they could be dedicated both to God as well as to uh, fellow humans. For instance, let me, let me just read this one or two for you. Why do you want to go further? You can see Ghalib so much. That this is the fact that this is not our fault. If we live and live, this is the fact that we live and live. And the amount of it is the fact that we live. उसे कौन देख सकता कि यगाना है वो यक्ता जो दुई की बू भी होती तो कहीं दो चार होता who can can see him or her that he is singularly unique if there was even a shred of duality of a two ness दुई two ness we would have met him somewhere would have would have seen him somewhere now this can be said about the beloved also you know and also about God इस तरह की बहुत आपको examples मिल जाएंगे तो मेरा तो ये ख्याल है जो शमीम साहब ने कहा उसके बाद मैंने I've start stopped making these distinctions about मजाजी ऐश कैन हकीकी but I must अभी so मजाजी what does it mean मजाजी means metaphoric metaphorical and हकीकी means real and the distinction is that only love for God is the real love Everything else, including love for your for other human beings, for your beloved, for your lover, yeah. are all metaphorical as against, mm. as compared to the real love, which is the love for God. So clearly an academic distinction. But one of the things I don't remember, 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 I don't remember. We can come back to it. So no, this share is for this, that the truth of the truth of the truth عشقِ مجازی عشق کی عشقِ حقیقی آخری منزل ہے مجازی عشق کی عشقِ حقیقی آخری منزل ہے چلو سوئے خدا اے زاہدو کوئے بتا ہو کر you know metaphorical love is the first or actually divine love is the last destination of metaphorical love oh devout let us walk through the lanes of idols to reach God basically that so this is my Jaisi and Ishqi Haqiqi. Good, I'll remember that about the distinction. You should actually. You know, so we're talking about your book and you were talking about your research for your book. And in this book, of course, you've translated Urdu poets from the 18th and 19th century. And Sufi poetry, of course, dates back to some previous centuries. Also, I remember from our last conversation on translation, um, you had said of Urdu poetry that it defies translation. Totally. Um, so I I'm that curious to know your thoughts about Sufi poetry and what is your engagement with the Sufi poets? Have you translated them? What is um, your sort of... So about yeah. translations, let me first quickly repeat what I said to you when we were doing a session on translations that I think it completely defies translation. You are really transcreating from one culture to another. Mm. And uh, I, I don't consider myself as a, as a translator, or at least not a good translator, if there can be such a thing. Uh, so far as Urdu poetry is concerned. But, uh, so in my book, the translations that I have made, I have given a, f a note, a whole one-page note on how not to read them as translations. So they are more of, uh, you know, explanatory and illustrative of what yeah. the poet wants to say. But uh, so far as my engagement with Sufi poets when I was writing this book is concerned, I think all the classical poets of Urdu poetry, especially the Delhi school of Urdu poetry, I think all of them were Sufi in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. غالب تو کہتے ہیں نا کہ آتے ہیں غیب سے یہ مزامی خیال میں غالب سریر خامہ نوائے سروش ہے these subjects come to me from some hidden cosmos the sound of my pen is really the sound the voice of an angel تو یہ غالب کا تو یہ سب ہی آپ دیکھ لیں اچھا اور پھر یہ مسائل تصوف یہ تیرا بیان غالب تجھے ہم ولی سمجھتے جو نہ بعد اخار ہوتا these mystical questions, these spiritual questions and your narrative, Ghalib, we would have considered you a wali, a Sufi, had you not been drinking wine. So, this is the truth of your statement, Ghalib. It is not, actually, it's not unusual for poets to be understood as prophetic in the Urdu tradition. But if you see the classical Urdu poets of Delhi, there were three poets of classical Delhi Urdu, who are known as the pillars, three pillars of classical poetry. Sauda, Khwaja Mir Dar, and Mir Taqi Mir. Mm. And I think all these three poets had a Sufi element to them, to them in their poetry. Now, I will Sauda ka sun, do hai, ek sunata hon. Also, whether we are sitting in the British Library, if you go up the India office records on the second floor, third floor, 
you will find the original diwan of sauda written in his own handwriting oh wow it's one of those things that the british have not stolen from us <laughs> it was given as a gift by sauda in lucknow mm. to a major uh, who was i think the assistant resident in in awad in those days mm. and it is found here in the indian office records oh, wow. so sauda ka uh, jo hai so uh, ye sher suniye aap sauda ka phir aap mujhe bataiyega ki ye sufi the ki nahi the he you know he asks the the pious to keep their arrogance and pride aside when they are praying ki amame ko utar ke padhiyo namaz sheikh amame ko utar ke padhiyo namaz sheikh sajde se warna sar ko uthaya na jayega take off your turban before you go to pray o oh sheikh otherwise you won't be able to raise your head aur aise is tarah ki bahut sari aise ek ek there's a recent share actually of of aga sarosh which also resonates uh, the same uh, thought ye ibadaton ka ghurur teri jabeen e shauq ko dast na le ye ibadat is pride of of worship i fear will uh, it it may sting your your eager forehead ye ibadaton ka ghurur teri jabeen e shauq ko dast na le ye hai saap isko bila jhijak tu namaz tod ke maar de this is a, it's a snake break your prayers and kill it to ye jo sab cheeze hain acha aur dil e sitam sada ko betabiyon ne loot liya ab look at the, this scornful comment on the orthodox wahhabis that sada makes this is also sufism dil e sitam sada ko wahhabiyon ne loot liya hamare kaabe ko dil e sitam sada ko betabiyon ne loot liya hamare kaabe ko wahhabiyon ne loot liya my my the my oppressed heart has been ravaged Uh, by anxiety as if the kaaba was ravaged by by the wahhabis acha fir aap meer pe aa jaiye meer tumne to pata nahi kya kya hai main ek ye laya tha zehra nigah sahiba ne meer ke bare mein ye ek paragraph hai unka and i want to read that in urdu and then i'll translate it meer ka ye manna tha ki jab tak zindagi hai ishq karo insanon se insanon ka ishq jo zeest karne ka hunar sikhata hai jo qalandari ka taaj pehnata hai aur इस इश्क की इंतहा यह होती है कि खाले को मखलूक एक जान हो जाते हैं इस राह इश्क पर चलने वाला इस तरह चलता है कि ना आबले फूटते हैं और ना खार टूटते हैं बकौल टी एस एलियट बड़ा शायर एक जिंदगी में कई जिंदगियां जी लेता है मीर भी कई जिंदगियां जिए और हर जिंदगी में इश्क करते रहे पहली जिंदगी में एक महबूबा मिली जिसकी झलक पर्दे या चिलमंस के पीछे से नजर आई और जब वो ना मिल पाई तो उन्होंने उसे चांद में बिठा दिया दूसरा इश्क फाके और उसरत से किया तीसरी जिंदगी में नवाब की मुलाजमत की बावजूद अपनी बददिमागी के नवाब की मुलाजमत से इश्क किया और उसको इस तरह छोड़ा कि फिर अपने सा अपने आप से सुरखरू भी हुए चौथी जिंदगी में जाम मस्जिद की सीढ़ियों पर बैठ के आते जाते अल्लाह के सब बंदों से इश्क किया और आखिरकार यही इश्क इश्क मुकम्मल कहलाया और ऐसा मिसरा फिर ज़ुबा से निकला हर शे जो यहाँ पैदा हुई है मौजू कर लाया है इश्क दिस इज जहरा निगा रीड द ट्रांसलेशन दिस इज माई ट्रांसलेशन मीर बिलीव दट एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर अलाइव यू मस्ट लव द लव दैट एग्जिस्ट बिटवीन ह्यूमन्स विच टीच इज मैन द आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग विच मेक्स यू वेयर द क्राउन ऑफ द वॉन्डरिंग एसेटिक एंड द अल्टीमेट स्टेट ऑफ दिस लव इज रीच when the creator and the creature become one those who walk on this path of love walk so finely that neither do the boils on their feet burst nor do the thorns on their path break as t s eliot has said a great poet lives many a life in a single life meer also lived many a life and in every life he loved in his first life he found a beloved caught a glimpse of her behind the drape of a curtain and when he could not have her he put her in the moon His second love was for starvation and poverty. In his third life, he found employment with the Nawab. Despite his ill temper, he loved the Nawab's employment. But when he left, he felt victorious. In his fourth life, sitting on the steps of the Jama Masjid, he loved every creature of God who passed by. And ultimately, it was this love that came to be known as complete love. And what words then fell from his lips? Every single thing born here has been perfected by love. and meer of course also you know uh, proclaims that he has shunned all religions so the bahut mashhoor meer ki ghazal hai ki ulti ho gayi sab tadbeere kuch na dawa ne kaam kiya dekha is bimari ye dil ne aakhir kaam tamam kiya iska maqta kya hai ki meer ke dino mazhab ko 
अब पूछते क्या हो उनने तो तशका खेचा दैर में बैठा कब का तर्क इस्लाम किया his his uh, you know his uh, brief translation for that location. i will i will translate this okay. uh, just the last share which is the relevant one meer ke dino mazhab ko ab puchte kya ho unne to kashka khecha dair mein baitha kab ka tark islam kiya uh, what is it that you want to know of of meer's religion now of meer's faith now he has uh, tilak on his forehead he sits in a temple and has renounced islam long ago it was means way of saying that he finds no difference between islam and anything else to to reach god and and the centrality of love i think in in his world view in me's world view is best realized in these two couplets of meer ki ishq hi ishq hai jahan dekho ishq hi ishq hai jahan dekho sare alam mein bhar raha hai ishq ishq hi ishq hai jahan dekho sare alam mein bhar raha hai ishq ishq maashooq ishq aashiq इश्क माशूक इश्क आशिक है यानी अपना ही मुबला है इश्क दर इज लव एंड ओनली लव वेर एवर यू लुक एंड ऑल क्रिएशन इज ओवर फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम लव लव इज द बिलव एंड लव इज द लवर एज इफ इट वॉज इन्वॉल्व इन एन अफेयर विद इट सेल्फ सो एंड एंड देन वी हैव कॉज अमीर दर्द वो तो ही वॉज अ सूफी पॉइंट इवन इन डेली इफ यू गो टू आसिफ अली रोड इवन टूडे यू विल फाइंड अ श्राइन Mm-hmm. which is called the shrine of khwaja mir dard the dargah of khwaja mir dard aur aisi aisi cheeze kahi hain unhone to tar damani pe shaykh hamari na jaiyo daman nichod de to farishte wuzu kare don't get deceived by my sordid clothes if uh, if if i uh, nichod de in english hoti hai if i yes yeah itne zabardast translators yahan baithe hain we have munis hai we have uh, any sitting here sab log bata sakte hain to so uh, farishte wuzu kare even angels will uh, go for prayer ablutions hmm. so to ye sab cheeze hain aur fir ghalib ke bare mein main bata hi chuka hu aapko to mera ye khayal hai i think all the classical urdu poets especially hmm. the ones covered in my book and i would say that for bahadur shah zafar also hmm. maybe barring zauk everybody else was perhaps a sufi in in one way or the other yeah. Yeah. there's another form of expression in sufi um, poetry or sufi tradition which is qawali hmm. of course and that's something that i also wanted your opinion on and that of course is the one that's been used so sort of commercially now in bollywood or in mainstream cinema but your just just your thoughts on the qawali i mean just in case uh, anyone's not familiar with qawali it's the sort of devotional singing of islamic poetry in mm-hmm. dargahs or in sufi shrines um so yeah what is it that how no, does qawali, that so i am i am i am not an expert on music at all but i am going i can tell you about qawali purely from the perspective of poetry uh urdu poetry especially so the origins of qawali of course are in the works of amir khusro mm. and amir khusro is one of the most influential figures in uh, the and transformative figures in the cultural landscape of yeah. in the indo iran in central india cultural landscape and uh, you know he was a, a polyglot he was a composer he was mm. a, uh, a musician uh, and he epitomizes the coming together of cultures from central asia and Uh, south asia but the word qawwali is actually derived from the word qal hmm. which which really means uh, you know uh, the word or a saying right. and it this qal was recited in the khanqa and the, uh, of uh, hazrat qutbuddin bakhtiyar kaki in delhi which is next to the qutb minar hmm. uh, and then it traveled from there to to punjab where it mixed with its own vibrant music of punjab hmm. and it was amir khusro who was responsible for bringing it back to delhi uh, as a means to express his love for his peer mm-hmm. hazrat nizamuddin auliya uh, that's that, this is how the qawwali had started you know this i think it also democratized mm-hmm. religion and faith in in some ways because uh, it diluted the power of traditional religion mm-hmm. and uh, focused on spirituality in that sense it was a very democratizing Uh, uh process the whole qawwali itself also i think it makes god very approachable you know ek hai na ki bhai wahan dozakh mein kadhai ke andar aadmi jal raha hai daro har cheez se so allah mein aisa darna jo hai this fear of god that was significantly reduced as a consequence of this form of music of the qawwali form of music and and then this this whole uh, is kya kahenge aap this whole tool of of uh, uh thinking of your peer mm. as 
the lover yeah. and yourself as the beloved aashiq and maashuk hmm. chhap tilak sab chheeni re mose naina milai ke hmm. baat agam ke hadini re mose naina milai ke is tarah ki jo cheeze hain prem bhati ka madhua pilai ke kya hai matwali kar deni re mose naina milai ke so these these things you know you you by you've taken away my look my 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 identity and everything from me just by a glance a single glance he's saying mm-hmm. this for his peer not for his not lover. for a, a human beloved or lover yeah. and um, of course there is a whole tradition of homo erotic poetry in sufism in in urdu poetry generally but uh, like shamsur rahman farooqi has said it homo erotic poetry was not frowned upon in those days in fact it was part of regular everyday life yeah but then there is and i just read that share to you about meri arze tamanna bhi ajab arze arze tamanna hai so it's about complete submission also mm. that's what qawwali is but unfortunately today it is a an art that is fast disappearing from from dargahs and it's mm. just turned commercialization has its own yeah. market effects yeah. which is and so that is effects on the qawwali too yeah i'll come back to the commercialization question i want to ask you who are your favorite sufi poets Main, and can you give uh, us some of the, your favorite or the classic kind of sufi poets yes absolutely uh, a classic ha huh? classic bhi i can read classic um uh, so let me just read this very unusual uh, nazm from sauda and uh, which according to me is a completely sufi way of looking at things mm. uh, and it's called nuskha e kimia the elixir the fabled elixir there's so there's a youngster who's very anxious to to gain quick success and he goes to a wise man lives with him for some time he serves him and then he asks that man he said can you can you give me the prescription for the nuskha e kimia the elixir and the man says yes i can give it to you but but on one condition whenever you use this elixir the danger of a banki bandar ka khatra should not cross your mind bandar ka khatra jo hai wo dimag mein nahi aana chahiye Now this is a very strange condition, you know, because it's so bizarre and strange that whenever this man would try and use the elixir, he would think, "Oh, this man said, 'Oh, the sh- the, the the threat of a uh, uh, monkey should not cross your mind,' and it will definitely cross his mind, and so the elixir will not work." The idea is that you must, you you can't, you unless you conquer your fear, no elixir would would work. Our nazm ye hai ki kaha jaye hai ek mahawas ka hal, kaha jaye hai ek mahawas ka hal. कि रखता था नित कीमिया का ख्याल और ये सब करके दिल बीच अपने कयास गया एक वो मर्द कामिल के पास रहा उसकी खिदमत में वो चंद साल किया मौके पे फिर आखिर सवाल कि अगर नुस्खे कीमिया याद हो तो बंदे को भी अपने इरशाद हो कहा अगर यही है तेरा मुद्दा तो देता हूँ तुझको तू जा और ला ये अज्जा हैं इसके ये लेकर बना मगर इसमें एक शर्त है दरमिया ये नुस्खा तू जिस वक्त लेकर बनाए कभी दिल में बंदर का खतरा ना आए <laughs> कहा अब तो ये बात मुमकिन नहीं जो खतरा है दिल में वो जाए कहीं न समझा गरज उसके रमजो नुकात के पर्दे में थी मर्द आरिफ की बात कि अगर दिल को खतरे के काबू किया तो फिर हेच है नुस्खा कीमिया a uh, ghazal a great ghazal actually and some urdu scholars seem to think that this is perhaps the greatest ghazal in classical urdu poetry ever written is a ghazal by siraj aurangabadi who again i mean uh, died in the 1700s mm. uh, and there is also a uh, debate in in urdu circles whether this was actually written by him or not having said that it's attributed to siraj aurangabadi and aur isme bahut qawaliyon mein gayi bhi gayi hai ki khabar e tahayyur e ishq sun न जुनू रहा न परी रही खबर तहयर इश्क सुन न जुनू रहा न परी रही न तो तू रहा न तो मैं रहा जो रही सो बेखबरी रही और वो अजब घड़ी थी मैं जिस घड़ी लिया दर्स नुस्खे इश्क का वो अजब घड़ी थी मैं जिस घड़ी लिया दर्स नुस्खे इश्क का कि किताब अकल की ताक पे जो पड़ी थी त्यों ही पड़ी रही और शह बेखुदी ने अता किया मुझे एक लिबास बरह नगी शह बेखुदी ने अता किया मुझे एक लिबास बरह नगी न खिरत की बखिया गरी रही न जुनू की पर्दा दरी रही और किया खाक आतश इश्क ने 
دلے بے نوا ایسے راج کوں کیا خاک آتش عشق نے دلے بے نوا ایسے راج کوں نہ خطر رہا نہ حضر رہا مگر ایک بے خطر ہی رہی اینڈ دس آئی ول ٹرانسلیٹ اٹس ناٹ مائی ٹرانسلیشن آئی ڈونٹ نو ہوز ٹرانسلیشن اٹ از بٹ اٹس از ہاکن ٹو دا ٹیل آف لوز پرپلیکسٹی نائدر نائدر دی آرڈر آف میڈنیس نار دی اینجلک بلوڈ ریمینڈ نائدر ڈڈ یو ریمین نار ڈڈ آئی اونلی ان اویئرنیس آئی ول ناٹ کال اٹ ان اویئرنیس ویسے جو رہی سو بے خبری رہی بینگ ان این اوبلیوین جو رہی سو بے خبری رہی دی کنگ آف سیلف لیسنیس کانفرڈ اپان می دا گارمنٹ آف نیکڈنیس اٹس اے اسٹرینج ٹرانسلیشن آئی ایم سوری بٹ اٹ ول میک ڈو آئی ول میک ڈو ود اٹ نائدر دا اسٹچ آف ریزن دس از ناٹ بیڈ نائدر دا اسٹچ آف ریزن ریمینڈ نار دا ویل آف میڈنیس اینڈ واٹ اے مارولس انسٹنٹ اٹ واز وین آئی لرنٹ آف دا الیگزر آف لو دا بک آف ریزن وچ آئی پلیسڈ آن دا شیلف ریمینڈ آن دا شیلف الون The fire of love has reduced the mute heart of Siraj to ashes. There is no fright, there is no caution, there is just fearlessness that remains. Baharal, okay, there are more shares, but one of them is my favorite ghazal. And then it is that, Jo ho so ho, ishq mein tere, that is, these shifali are sitting here, they will listen to you in a few minutes, but Baharal, these are all things. بھائی وہ تو اس طرح کی چیزیں ہیں نا کہ وہ شیشہ صاف کرتا رہا اور آئینے پہ دھول تھی بٹ رومی اینڈ ہاف از یور رائٹ اٹس دے آر انسٹاگرام پوئٹس نا رومی بینگ پلیڈ ڈیورنگ ڈیورنگ کیٹ واک سو یو نو دا واز دس دا the translations of rumi in in the united states of america mm. actually have their origins in this translator called uh, coleman box mm. and yeah. coleman box wanted to take rumi out of the context of islam out of the islamic context and make him a poet not just for muslim audiences but the way he did it mm. i think is is problematic mm. like i mean all translations have their promises and perils but Rumi himself described, and I'll tell you why this is problematic, to take Rumi out of the Islamic context. Because Rumi himself says that his Masnavi is actually an explainer of the Quran. Mm. Uh, yet, very little trace of religion remains in the uh, translations that you find of Rumi, in, yeah. uh, especially on Instagram and Goldman Bach's translations. So there is, I think, uh, I, th I don't remember who, but somebody, some author calls it the I think he calls it the colonialism, uh, spiritual colonialism or spiritual, spiritual imperialism. Yeah. I think that's what it is because that's what it is at work here. Because if you bypass uh, the, the, the Islamic landscape and bring Rumi out of it, I think it's like reading Milton without the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And uh, there is a scholar and I, uh, I would ask all of you to actually read him if you are interested in, in Rumi called Javed uh, Mudaddidi. Mm. He's also done excellent translations of Rumi. But he, uh, he has been saying that it's important to recognize that, yes, Rumi was heterodox. But he was heterodox in a Muslim or Islamic context. Mm. You can't take that out, yeah. of, out of Rumi. It completely ruins the spirit of Rumi. Yeah, so my question was going to be, do you think it's in a way, like do you see it as a positive thing that it's, so popular around the world now and clearly that kind of universal timeless appeal is being recognized whether in Bollywood, whether you know, <laughs> in no, certainly, catwalks so, uh, or is it sort of diluting its essence? Um, both. Its I'm very happy that Rumi is being read and had there been no translations we would not have read yeah. the best of works of Spanish authors and yeah. German authors and Argentinian authors. So Rumi, had there been no translation most of us would not have run, uh, read Rumi. Mm. Certainly translations are very welcome and uh, but 
Uh, I would respectfully disagree with translations like the ones that are made by Coleman Barks because mm. they, it's a deliberate effort to at attempt to actually take Rumi out of context. Yeah. And those certainly are a great disservice, mm. undoubtedly. But yes, if the, if the choice is between not having any translations at all and having these kind of translations, I will go for the latter, certainly. I think I would mm. read these translations. And just because I mean, we do have a little bit more time before we sort of move on to the audience questions, what, what do you think are the sort of biggest challenges while translating um, a tradition like this? So you said it definitely shouldn't be taken out of the Islamic context, which has happened in some yes. translations. Do you see any other sort of major issues in translating yes. uh, poems I, like this? I think uh, so far as translations from Persian into English or Indo-Persian cultural and literary landscape into English are concerned, you are really translating from one completely different culture into mm. a, another completely different culture. Transcreating. And transcreating, yes, yeah. if, yes. You know more about translation than I do. But, but my view on this is that unless the work that has been translated reads like a good poem in the language that it is being translated in, yeah. it is a great disservice. I mean, there are some very good scholars of, of classical Urdu poetry who have translated Ghalib. I'll give you an example. Mm. Amazing scholars. Perhaps I would go to these scholars for interpreting Ghalib, mm. but in context. But I would not take their translations or accept their translations. For instance, right. a Ghalib ka sheer hai ki uh, thi khabar garm ke Ghalib ke udenge purze. You can use this next time in parliament. Thi khabar garm ki Ghalib ke udenge purze dekhne ham bhi gaye the pa tamasha na hua. Now, this translation is a very well respected translator or author. Ne kiya hai, News was hot that parts of Ghalib would fly. <laughs> we too went to see, but the show was not held. I mean, this is not going to be a good translation. If you have any muhavra, if you find a, an equivalent idiom yeah. in the language in which you are translating it in, please use it. Because it must make sense to the person you are translating it for. You know, in that person's language. Because it needs to be a replication yeah. of the experience of reading. Absolutely, that absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I think we had also spoken last time about sounds and it's not just yeah. about the meaning, yeah, but that's zaroori. another very important I thing. I fully important. agree with you. I am uh, have been working on majaz. Hmm. Uh, expert on majaz is sitting here, Shefali Frost. <laughs> she sings majaz beautifully. And, and there's Annie sitting here who's been after my life to complete that book, but I have mm. not been able to so far. It's here in my head, yeah. but I have to write it. So the translations in, in that book are being done jointly by Jerry Pinto and me. Okay. And as we are negotiating these translations, mm. every time I send Jerry something, an, an original Urdu verse of Majaz with my explanation in English, he asks me to also recite it and send it to him. Yeah. Because the tonality, you know, the, the, the musicality, it, mm. it actually does matter. Yes, it matters yeah. a lot. Well, I am going to wrap up our conversation yes, now please. and I will open it up to the audiences and there are already some hands up. Um, so please feel free to get in your questions here and we'll get it. Vinay, do you want to? Okay. We'll come back to you after that then. Thank you for a very interesting uh, discussion. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the homoerotism in Urdu poetry and uh, Madhavi Menon was at Oxford this week and she gave an interesting lecture about the use of pronouns in Bulesha's poetry. Mm. So I wanted to ask you, how do you see uh, aspects of homoerotism in the Islamic context? And um, you know, can, can one interpret Sufi poetry as being way ahead of its time, or are we reading too much into that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, should I answer the question first? Yeah. yeah. Answer, we'll uh, one so one. thank you for telling me that Madhavi was at Oxford because she did not call me, and I'm going to take <laughs> that up with her. Uh, Madhavi has actually uh, worked a lot on this. And I have briefly commented on this in my book. I, yes, I actually fully agree with you that it uh, was much ahead of its time because homoerotic homo poetry, homoerotic writings were not frowned upon. They were freely, uh, I mean, people were freely homoerotic in that. But, the, so, like Farooqi's, I just, I just mentioned Shamsur Rahman Farooqi. And his view is that it was not frowned upon because people did not care about it. Mm. If, if you go to the, to the, if you went to the mullahs, for instance, to take a fatwa, it's a specific mm. fatwa, the fatwa would have come against homosexuality or, or homoerotic poetry. But 
people did not do that. They did not, even today. I mean, you know, if you see the fatwas that are issued by the ulama, they don't, they don't do it. In, there is no suam order jurisdiction of ulama to do it, like the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. People go and ask them, oh, is this not against our culture? And what are they to say? Yes, it is. It is an Islamic, you know. So in those days, people were far more tolerant. The license that was given to poets, mm -hmm. especially to the poets of the, of the Indo-Persian landscape, was far wider than the license given to the European cartoonists today. And you are talking of homoeroticism in the context of Sufi poetry. All Sufi poetry is homoerotic. Most of it actually. Dargah pe jo kawaliyan hoti hain, zyada tar aise hi hain. Lekin aap ye aaj keh ke dikha dijiye sa. Aap aaj keh ke ye baat dikha dijiye aur kahin kahin to aapko blasphemy mein jo hai wo sazaye maut bhi ho sakti hain. <laughs> well, that, that label I wear anyway very proudly. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. My name is Maryam Aslani. I'm also a research fellow at Oxford. I thank you for your lecture. I particularly enjoyed your Persian accent. It was brilliant. It's horrible. Uh, <laughs> my question comes to you. I'm not a specialist on poetry or Sufism. Uh, I'm a Persian, so I grew up with Persian poetry. And I'd like to challenge you a little bit about uh, uh, putting Rumi in the context of Islam, because I grew up being told by my teachers and my parents that Rumi is a very secular uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 poet. And, I'm uh, going and often I think, that, uh, and I think he was a Persian um, uh, poet, more than Islamic poet. And often the distinction between uh, being a Persian and being a Muslim is, is, is kind of blurred. Uh, and, uh, and I think as I read Rumi, I, I, I see him as, uh, as, as a poet that doesn't, I mean, his, his aim is truth seeking and the truth may be found in God or religion mm. or may not. I mean, I was actually reading one of his poems from the Masnavi, which is about the animal uh, relationship and the hierarchy in the forestry. And he really pushes us to think about <laughs> he, uh, uh, the universe, not in terms of religion or race or, or identity, but uh, I mean, in a way, quite universal. I, I wonder if you can just comment. Yes, on thank you very much. That. But let me first caveat my comment by saying that I am neither an expert on Rumi nor on Persian. And uh, perhaps you know more about Rumi than me. Uh, but I, I must say this. Of course, Rumi himself has said that I have, I don't know how to say it in, in Persian, but uh, there's a couplet of Rumi which, which basically means that I have taken the marrow out of the Quran and thrown the bones to the dogs. Hmm. Mongrels. I mean, of course, this is something that you can't dare to say today. But when I said that you can't take Rumi out of the Islamic context, and the challenge that you are making is that Rumi is a secular, secular poet, I wonder why you don't see Islam as a secular religion. Yes. If you see the essence of Islam is extremely tolerant, yes. non-discriminatory, enduring, all-inclusive. It is a shame that Islam has been, you know, uh, sorry, vilified. Yeah, vili vilified, of course, but I think the, a lot of ulema of a particular sect have done extreme wrong to Islam by portraying it as a religion which is intolerant of the other, by portraying it as a religion that wants to conduct people who want to convert others into your own self. If you, according to me, I mean, I am, let me also confess that I am agnostic. But the Islam that I have read is a very secular, all-inclusive Islam. It is pluralistic in nature. Mm -hmm. And that was Rumi's Islam. And Rumi, and when I said that you can't you know, take him out of the context of, of Quran and Islamic teaching, it is not I who is saying, it is Rumi himself who says that my Masnavi is actually an explanation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. I would be very wary of going beyond what Rumi has said about himself. And why would you think that secularism is not part of Islam? That's what I, yeah. <laughs> question here. Yeah. Thank you very much for this fascinating talk, Saif. Uh, my question is again about someone who did, you didn't mention perhaps. Uh, Iqbal, do you consider him to be Sufi? If no, then why? And if you consider him to be a Sufi, can you tell us a bit about Iqbal's Sufism and Ghalib's Sufism? And also, if I may expand on it, how, what will have happened if 
I'm just assuming, Iqbal was in Ghalib's time and wrote what he wrote, and Ghalib was in Iqbal's time and he wrote what he wrote, how will they be perceived if that was the case? Thank you. Okay, let me first answer your first question. And you know, see, that's what happened when journalists don't come on time. <laughs> yeah, I started yeah. with Iqbal. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, yes, and, and we, uh, we did discuss Iqbal. But thank you for that question, Danish. Uh, uh, I think Iqbal and Ghalib belong to the same lineage. There are two very distinct lineages in classical Urdu poetry. One lineage is that's the one that starts with perhaps uh, Mir or even Sauda, comes down to uh, Ghalib and then to straight away actually to, to Iqbal and then perhaps to Fez. That is, these are the poets who uh, talk about, I mean, who are more philosophers than poets. The other lineage is the one that starts from uh, somebody like uh, Momin, comes down to Zok and Jigar, and uh, romance and you know, uh, uh, wine and women, and things like that. Uh, Ghalib and Iqbal certainly belong to the same uh, lineage. And I think if Ghalib was in Iqbal's time and Iqbal was in Ghalib's, there would have perhaps the essential difference would have just have been of the language. That is, this is my view. Uh, Iqbal certainly is also a most uh, misread poet. Uh, and and uh, I would say with all humility at my command that perhaps his politics is to blame for that. He himself is to blame for that. But if you read Iqbal, uh, bereft of his politics, which is very difficult, which is very difficult, uh, surely there are a lot of similarities with Ghalib. See this inquisitive mind of of, of Ghalib and Iqbal is exactly the same. Aap Iqbal ka share dekhe na ki Ghalib ka share hai pahle ki I'm trying to, this is what we do in, in court, you know, when lawyers have to think on their feet when you get these kind of questions from judges which you did not expect. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Ghalib ka share hai ki uh, wo kahe, hoon uh, hai, hoon garmi hai nishat hai tasawur se naqma sanj mein andalib hai gulshane na afrida hoon. <laughs> it is the, few, the, the fire of imagination that fuels me. Uh, I am the bulbul of a garden that is not yet born. Mm. Iqbal ko, and I am going to quote from, from Shikwa, Jawab Shikwa. It's not one of his best works, but certainly his most popular work. And he Shikwa karte hain, Allah se, ki ye shikayat nahi hai unke khazane mamur, nahi mehfil mein jinhe baat bhi karne ka shaur. Kahar to ye hai ki kafir ko mile huro kusur, aur bechare musalmaha ko fakat wada hai hur. Lekin iska jawab kya deta hai Allah? In jawab shikwa, ki kya kaha? Behre musalmaha hai fakat wada hai hur. Shikwa beja bhi kare koi to lazim hai shaur. Tum mein huro ka koi chahane wala hi nahi. Jalwaye tur to maujud hai, musa hi nahi. The flame, the flame of the tur exists, but there is no Moses. There is no, yes. Amidst us, amidst you. Yeah. So there is no inquisitive mind that wants to go there, that wants to find out more, that wants to explore. So this is the thing, the lineage is the same. Thank you. I can't actually. The shikwa. Now, shikwa, I'm going to sit down. Uh, so two questions. One was uh, about secularism. Yes. What is the definition of secularism that you're using when you're especially saying things like Islam is a secular religion? Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, to my mind, the simplest uh, is a opposite between, a binary between secular and religious. So uh, just some clarity on that. Um, and secondly, or do you want to take it one at a time? No, no, go yeah. ahead. Secondly, was just a, a more technical thing, like uh, uh, both personally in your opinion and also like popularly, what is what you say is a defining characteristic of just the label Sufi? Because like, I mean, we all know it's a very yeah. popular label and a Bollywood song is Sufi, yeah, or this yeah. is Sufi, that is Sufi, Sufi rock, Sufi pop. Uh, what makes it Sufi in popular imagination? And as an expert, subject matter expert, what would you say, like how valid is that? Or what would your alternate definition, defining characteristic be? I think the, uh, the second question I had answered in the beginning, I started with that. But anyway, I'll answer that again. I think for me, the most important thing in a characteristic or, a, or the USP of a Sufi uh, a poem is the, the inward looking of the poet. Mm. You know, uh, apne aap mein, apne andar ke dekhna. 
So it, and it manifests itself in, in different ways. It has manifested itself, as I said, in the form of, of science, in the form of uh, great art, not just poetry. But the, over, the overreaching arch in all this is, to, uh, is that inward, spiritual inward looking. And the, about your first question about secularism, what do I, you are absolutely right in some uh, cultures. And if I was talking of, the, uh, say, uh, common law uh, as opposed to continental law, I would have absolutely said that there is a very uh, dense curtain between secularism and religion because uh, the church and state are entirely different. Mm -hmm. But in this context, in the context of the cultural landscape, I think it is, uh, is you know, a syncretic uh, culture that, that all these things are founded upon. I do not believe in an Islam which, uh, which uh, teaches me to uh, say, not just hate, but even an Islam that teaches me not to believe that the other person who does not believe in Islam is not equal to me. And if you read the Quran without commentary, and I'm, I'm making a very audacious claim, I think. If you read the Quran without commentary, you will find that the Quran in terms says that there cannot be any compulsion in religion, in the matter of religion. And in fact, there is an ayat in the Quran which says, to you is your religion, to me is mine. And there can be no compulsion in the matter of religion. Of course, it has been interpreted variously by different people. But I think that is the essence of Islam. Tolerance itself, Islam came as a social reform movement. What languages do you understand, sir? जी उसी को मैं उर्दू कहता हूँ जब आपको वो थोड़ी कम समझने आने लगती है तो उर्दू जाती है ज़्यादा समझने आने लगती है हिंदी हो जाती है <laughs> तो वो उर्दू वही है हिंदुस्तानी जी तो बात ये है कि आ, अगर आप ये समझ के बैठे हैं कि साहब मेरा इस्लाम वो इस्लाम है जो मुझसे ये कहता है कि ये करो जन्नत में जाओगे हूरे मिलेंगी ये शख्स जो साथ में बैठा है ये नहीं कर रहा है इसलिए ये दो में जाएगा तो मैं इस इस्लाम में यकीन नहीं रखता हूँ और मेरा ये ख्याल है कि ये वो इस्लाम था भी नहीं जो रसूल लेके आए थे क्योंकि उस वक्त क्या हो रहा था कि औरत का दर्जा जो था वो द वुमन वॉज लाइक अ चैटल बच्चे अगर आपको पता चलता था कि लड़की हुई है आपकी तो इन्फेंटिसाइड इतनी ज़्यादा थी कि आप वहीं जाके मार देते थे उसको जो होती थी पैदा किसी घर में दुख्तर या हाल हैं तो खौफ शमातत से बेरहम मादर फिरे देखती जब थी शोहर के तेवर तो जिंदा उसे गाड़ आती थी जाकर ये इसको ख़त्म करने के लिए इस्लाम आया तो इस्लाम आया ही इसलिए था कि वो एक इक्वलाइजिंग एक डेमोक्रेटाइजिंग फोर्स बने इस तरह का रिलीजन अगर उसको ऐसा बना दिया गया है कि वो किसी और को टॉलरेट ही नहीं कर रहा है तो मैं उसको उसमें यकीन नहीं रखता दैट्स वट आई मेंट बाई वन आई सेट दैट इट इज़ अ प्लोरलिस्टिक रिलीजन इन आई वॉज रिलीजन इन दैट सेंस वेरी पावरफुल थैंक यू um any more questions there's one at the oh, end it's and then we'll come back yeah. okay. so one with lisa at the back Thank you so much. It's really fascinating, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, we know the uh, what is heart of Sufism, uh, which is love. You know, love for the God and love for fellow human beings, and uh, Allah lives uh, res resides in us. Uh, but there is another notion in Sufism which I am I'm, I'm fascinated about is patience. Uh, and uh, and uh, when the Sufism talks about patience, it talks about our ability to see um, a plant, growing plant, uh, and the blossoming fruit. Um, so that that the journey that takes uh, to to that um, the flower to bloom is is patience. Um, I, I would I would um, I would like to know from you that um, um, I cherish Shams Tabrizi uh, and and uh, and uh, his relationship with Rumi um, uh, to find God and to find love uh, in one another. Would you comment on that? Actually, I won't because that's not my subject. I was here to discuss <laughs> Sufism and Urdu poetry. <laughs> and uh, by on the sidelines, I talk about Rumi because I think Sufism or Sufi tradition is incomplete without Rumi. But I would really not like to speak about something I don't know anything about. So sorry for that. <laughs> That's the last question. Thank you. Yeah, let's do a last question uh, here at the front. Anyone else? Oh, there's. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can hear both questions. Get together, maybe. Yeah. Thank and you so much. Um, yeah. Say hi. This is a very refreshing um, take on Sufism that I've seen in the West, especially. Uh, so my question is more around 
the, the issue that you already raised uh, about the Urdu and, um, you know, like the languages that have been divided due to colonization and now also because of nation states. Uh, so there's the Indian, the Pakistani, although they are the same. Um, so how has this politics influenced <laughs> the Sufi poetry Bhai, uh, across? Let me, let me answer that in one kata. Let me first take that question and answer it. Okay. So Wahid, by the way, runs a beautiful poetry group at Mansfield College in Oxford University on Wednesdays. And a classical Urdu and Persian poetry. So uh, there, is, there was a poet, uh, in, a humorous poet in Delhi called um, Sagar Khayyami. And uh, once uh, there was shortage of mutton in Delhi, lamb, uh, because there was an abattoir issue. There was an environmental law issue when the abattoir was shut. Sagar Khayyami was in Delhi those days and he said, Ki ek mahina ho gaya hai, band hai hum par matan. <laughs> ek mahina ho gaya hai, band hai hum par matan. Daavaton mein kha rahe hai, bhindiyan ahle sukhan. <laughs> ek mahina ho gaya hai, band hai hum par matan. Daavaton mein kha rahe hai, bhindiyan ahle sukhan. Aur kha ke ghuiyya, kya dikhla hai shayari ka baakpan. Ho gaye palak ka patta nazuki se gulbadhan. <laughs> और नफरतों की जंग में देखो तो क्या-क्या हो गया नफरतों की जंग में देखो तो क्या-क्या हो गया सब्जियां हिंदू हुई बकरा मुसलमा हो गया तो यही बात हमारी जुबानों के साथ भी हुई इट इज द सेम थिंग दैट हैज हैपेंड विद स्टीरियोटाइपिंग ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस हिंदी हैज बिकम अ हिंदू लैंग्वेज उर्दू हैज बिकम अ मुस्लिम लैंग्वेज आई मीन द लैंग्वेज कांट हैव अ रिलीजन रिलीजन माइट प्रोबब्ली हैव अ लैंग्वेज बट द लैंग्वेज सर्टेनली कैन नॉट हैव अ रिलीजन उर्दू इज द लैंग्वेज ऑफ लव and i think that really is the usp of urdu that it 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 does not divide people it brings them together so mm. but kya kare sahab ab agar hamare buzurgon se koi galti hui hai to uska muawza to hum dena padega thank you yeah last question yeah it's a slightly different topic um i have watched your stuff with um on sahil ladwani ladwanvi uh, and javed akhtar and you know it's in the context of bollywood like you know you just mentioned earlier that you know khwaja mere khwaja and others are not the best presentation what would you recommend as if there's been any channel or the right uh, ways where sufi has been mainstreamed uh, you know in bollywood or elsewhere there in bollywood of course the old hindi films have some very good qawwali mm. some amazing qawwali if you see garam hawa bulle shah ka ha They do. Again, sir, the problem is that I was talking about Urdu poetry, <laughs> and Bulle Shah is not Urdu poetry, mm -hmm. and yeah. So, uh, but. Boy, I'm now. No, this is asking in Bollywood. Bollywood. So, no. cafe, warm hmm. air. अच्छा आप और जो पुरानी कवालियाँ हैं आप वो सब देख लें बट आई थिंक कैफी इन गरम अगर एक मुझसे कोई पूछा जाए तो कैफी का जो कलाम है गरम हवा में आई थिंक कैफी साहब हिम सेज आउट डन हिमसेल्फ इन गरम हवा सो और हाँ लाइक शिफाली सिंह की इफ यू कम आउट ऑफ द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ बॉलीवुड इवन कंटेम्प्रेरी उर्दू पोइट्स लाइक मजाज फोकेट मजाज आई मीन आई वॉज रीडिंग अमजद इस्लाम अमजद दिया दर एंड आई थॉट इट वॉज कम्प्लीटली सूफी यू नो Uh, and uh, that uh, the question that you had actually had raised about uh, Shams Tabrizi before that, what you said about the quality of patience—that is exactly what you find in Amjad's kalam. That mohabbat ki tabiyat mein ya kaisa bachpana kudrat ne rakha hai? Ki wo kitni bhi purani ho jaye kya something like that? Ki usse taayid taaza ki zarurat phir bhi rehti hai. Aur usme beech mein hi aata hai that ki raat ko bacha jo hai wo utke dekhta hai ki mohabbat ka pauda ab kahan tak? Ji. I think it's time to wrap up now. But thank you so much for all the wonderful questions and thank you. Thank you, Mohini. Uh, thank you all. Thank you very much.